Yeah, the hardest parts are Own Student Smo, Four Kings. Oh, so, so, I always forget about um, Sif. Sif is actually going to be kind of tricky. There's a ring that stops. Yeah, yeah, there's a ring that like makes you stealthy, and if you stay in a very specific area when you fight against Nido, the skeletons don't attack you. Oh, I, I didn't know there was a league prediction from yesterday. I think it was 3-2 at the end. 3-2 mean guy. Rub against Ponza? Interesting. I'll just play my basic planes and play a Sentinel. Well, Ridden 6 on the Sentinel is pretty good, but this is obviously like really a spot where recommission shines. 2-2 two, two Esper Sentinel is a pretty crazy card. Like this this has really got me thinking. Like if, if Sentinel like if there was just a two mana two two version of Sentinel, that card would also be modern staple. <laughs> our opponents today, our po all of our opponents today have been so slow. There's so many, so many random pauses. Um, okay. I'm gonna play Chromatic Star Portable Hole, I guess. Yeah, 2 minute 2 2 Sentinel might be better. I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe Magic Online's running poorly. I don't know what's going on. Today's been so bad. All the uh, <laughs> Daybreak Games people are on break, I guess. Okay, we can play 3 3 Dental Cyst. I think I just want to go Shadow Spear plus 2-2 two, two Esper Sentinel. Well, then the Shaman attacks me pretty well. Which is the main tutor target for Engineer. You could probably say that Frexian Dragon Engine is the main tutor target, but the reality is, you know, it's a very flexible card. You have a lot of different, like, good choices. Alright, let me play the Nettle Cyst. And then, like, if I can find a land, I can go, like, recommission Esper Sentinel, equip Nettle Cyst to Esper Sentinel, too, if they kill the germ token. <laughs> not yet, Napoleon, not yet. Do you have a couple cheap tips for playing faster on Moto? I mean, mostly, like, knowing when you have to do something versus not having to do something. I don't know, I don't know if that makes sense, but, like... Here, I, I'm just tapped out. I'm, I'm F6. I'm not doing anything. This one's pretty obvious. And just, like, just anticipate what your opponents are going to do. Like, it's just try to think about, like, what lines you're going to take if, you know, based on what your opponents might do. And, um, get, you know, there, there's a, a lot of it is just, like, getting into good habits. And, um, I don't know. It's, I've, I've been playing Magic Online for, like, 10 years. And so it's, it's really hard for me to, <laughs> it's really hard for me to like figure out what you need to do when you're getting into it but um I, I don't think the learning curve is maybe as high as people make it out to be but it's also very easy for me to say that because again i've been just playing so long okay i'll leave this uncracked so that the sentinel's bigger with the metal cyst on it Big S for Sentinel, Shadow Spear on it should be very hard for the red green deck to beat. Obviously, Besaju would be a problem. Hard to play around it. Was I playing before the trade bots? Not that long. I've been playing since like Return to Ravnica. I've talked to people that say they never think about their lines for the next turn because what the opponents does change it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it doesn't always, and you should also be thinking about what your opponent can do and what you would do based on what your opponent can <laughs> can do on their turn, you know? Probably preach it to the choir a little bit, though. All right, I think we're just going to cast Shadow Spear and make a, a construct this turn. Smith, thank you for the 17 months. Appreciate you. Learning curve is insanely steep and punishing when you try to learn how to auto pass. The priority passing system is atrocious compared against X Mage. Okay, so again, like it's it's been a really long time since I've like learned this stuff for myself. So 
what like I mean, can you elaborate a little bit uh, obviously no big deal if not but like what what is what is so difficult because like for the most part i like just either click okay or I yield till the end of turn or i yield through the turn and i basically don't do anything else so like what is um oh brutal copy fury plus uh Reflection, plus red and six pink on the Sentinel to finish it off. Make this, you know, make a tote copy so they have to, they have to ping. I, I know it can make an artifact, but they can ping. It's like, if you, if you have things up, you just like hover over okay, you click okay when you don't have, when you don't want to respond. And then you stop clicking, you stop that when you do want to respond. Okay, taking six. This is gonna be an interesting because we get we get to put the nettle system in the construct. We get the shadow spirit to make it just gigantic tri trample life linker. We get needle ren and six, or, or we'll needle the reflection. Maybe it's better to make a second construct than it is to. If I make a second construct, I can't cast the needle though. So yeah, I think I just have to float. Oh yeah, I forgot I have the main deck Haywire might. That's pretty good here. I can't kill the Reflection because it's a creature though. Could get Green Man off the star. Needle. Equip equipping. I mean, I think the, just the creature is the most relevant, especially with the equipment in play. But maybe I'll equip Nettle Sis to Haywire Might, Shadow Spear to the Construct. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 14, 15, Trample, Trample, Life Link. Can exile Cloth this? It's a creature right now. We can't we cannot currently exile Cloth this. So needle reflection of Kiki Jiki. I don't really have a great attack with this construct. So I think I have to pass. Mega 1414 life link. I think that uh getting two blockers this turn is better. I could just move this over next turn. I don't think you you can exo cloth this if it's not a creature, if they don't have enough devotion. My Trent Smith over Engineer. Yeah, I mean, that, that was a deck we've played already on stream several times uh, to good success. So you can find, uh, I think, Channel Fireball, Cyborg Guide, YouTube videos, listen to the stream decker. This is kind of like a, a different take on the deck that is playing Engineer plus Recommission. But the but, but yeah, we've, we've played Mono White with like Dispatch over Ragavan and, and Ingenious Smith over Engineer, and that deck is good. And the thing about that deck is it really didn't change much with Brothers War, and so this is this is a version that's like much more in on the Brothers War cards. No, we don't play the Crackdown Construct combo in this build because we're not playing Fiddlebender. It's just not that good without Fiddlebender. Okay. So I think we hold the Engineer for next turn. Maybe we don't hold on. So if I equip the Nettle Cyst over to the Construct, 18-18, gain 18 life. And then I can Lightning Greaves. I can Lightning Greaves the Haywire Might for a blocker that they can't ping. Oh, 17-17. Go up to 23. Yeah, I think this is correct. Can't anyways cloth this can eat it. That's right, that's right. Yeah, use Greaves before we attack. I don't think they have set, they don't have 17 points to put in front, right? They have 19 percent on board. Yeah, it's just not enough. Cause I get to gain two life uh, and first strike damage to you off the, off the chump block. I guess, it, I guess they could theoretically put everything, hold on, they says four, 10, 16, 20. Yeah, they could put everything or almost everything in front of the constructs to to do a big trade, but I think that would trade would probably favor me, and the, the Clothis would maybe become non-devoted anymore, and I could um, haywire might it. 
The main issue with the passing mechanism is passing priority system is given the same importance with thing placed on the stack. Whereas very frequently you just want to keep some keep passing until something happens. Something is placed on the stack. I know you could turn off stops on and off. I see, I see. I, I, I guess, it, I don't know. I think if you just like have a, like a high degree of focus and you're just like, okay, I'm going to click okay to this. I, I, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying to some extent, but... Um, if you if you try to think and you try to plan for like what it is you want to prepare to respond to, then um, I think it'll, things may get easier. Obviously, without knowing more context exactly what we're describing, I don't know exactly what else to say. But thank you for the feedback. I can say that. Yeah, I mean hockey. Uh, for, yeah, for me, hockey is like they just they're they're maybe a little bit too much effort. Where I I, I like to lean back and have a laugh, but ho hockey's do help. Okay, um, I think I only want one needle. Do I want to bring in any extra copies of Haywire Might? I'm not really that scared of Blood Moon. I think one copy can be fine. Um, I think Sword of Feast and Famine can be fine. I think for the most part our, our game one plan seems to be pretty good against them though. <laughs> I may just run it back, I don't know. What do you press to auto exile cards to double treasure crews? I don't auto exile, I just click the cards I want to exile. I don't I don't know I didn't know that, that was even an option. Yeah, power conduits for saga shenanigans, and you can turn with engineer, and sometimes even recommission the, the conduit. Obviously, not super often, but I didn't think I'm just running back. I don't see Dragon Engine in the Stream Decker. Oh, yeah, for for whatever reason, for Xe and Dragon Engine, Stream Decker is it's just not in Stream Decker's database. Um, <laughs> it's just not there. I don't know. Let's keep it. Sword blocks their whole deck. Uh, they have some. They have plenty of red creatures. I, sword is okay against them, but I don't know. I, I I feel okay about my decision to just run it back. I think not. I think siding in some things is obviously reasonable, but I do I do stand by my point that our our game game one plan is pretty good against them. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna lead on Sentinel here. I wish there was still yield to instep or opponent action instead of only having one or the other. Yield to instep or opponent action. So I so I guess one thing is like how how is yielding till opponent action like that different from just clicking okay? You know what I mean? Like just like they take like just waiting until you have an okay box, that is like that's whenever your opponent takes an action. Or I guess you just go through the phases. You go through the phases that way I see. Thank you, Esper Sentinel. Again, I'm just like kind of so far removed. It's it's good to hear this kind of feedback usually. Alright, um Let's go Stringleaf Drumstone Forge for Cauldra. And so like one one really fun line you get with the restoration power conduit builds is like they kill your Stoneforge Mystic on turn two, and then you get to restoration, bring back your Stoneforge Mystic while like passively getting a lot of value. You can also get Lightning Greaves here. It's pretty good with, like, as, maybe Greaves is better with the Nettlesist Restoration Engineer. Although, if they kill the Stoneforge Mystic, we can get Greaves on the Stoneforge Mystic ETB if it comes back. And if it, if it if they don't kill it, we're thrilled that they don't kill it, so. It's maybe just fine. Looks like a Fury. Maybe not. Fury plus a one drop. Turn three, Hardcast Fury. Very good draw for my opponent, and they're on the play. Saga's a good draw for us. So can I afford to Restoration this turn? Probably not. Yeah, I think we go Sentinel, 3-3 three, three, Nettle Cyst.
Could have got Nettle Cyst Sentinel if I plan on just chump blocking with the the the, ger the Sentinels of the Germ. Morning, Frank. Oh, this is a four four right because of the the Saga, so I can actually block the Fury potentially with the Germ. That would be nice. Although, fortunately, I'm not getting that option. I'm taking a lot of damage. Not lethal, I think. Six plus eleven damage down to four. Gonna be tough. They don't have too much of a follow up. Maybe enough of a follow up though. All right. So. Goblin Engineer, Saga Token, three blockers, block, 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 die, because I have to crack the, the Flood Strand, go to three. I don't see really any way to have more than three blockers here. So let's go to game, game three. The favorite Soulsborne series boss? Probably Black Flame Frida. I think that she's my favorite. Okay, I'm going to play for game three. Dispatching Fury is so slow. Gets so much value. Which phase? I mean, kind of like all of them, I guess. It's like, I don't necessarily... I mean, the third phase is the coolest, I guess. But it's the culmination of all of it. Ooh, Mulligan getting Eternal Nest for Sentinel and Portable Hole feels pretty bad. It's a one-lander on the play. Let's, let's Mulligan. And this one at least has Springleaf Drum. Okay, let's keep this. Let's put back the second Restoration. Because we have the drum, our mana is pretty fixed, so we can just get a planes, which is good against the the old Blood Moon deck. Does Ragavan do anything against them? Uh, yeah, especially on the play. That's a nice pickup. Gonna bolt the Sentinel. Give me that card. So she's not up six. Sam, 30, 32 months ago, thank you. Oh, gross. That's no fun. Force pitch Ren in six. Well, that is the nice thing with this build is like with recommission and restoration, in theory, you're able to rebuild. It's kind of, it thinks that this was the land we drew. Shocking and Stomping Ground. I don't know what that represents. Maybe Besage you. We drew any other land there. We're in like so much better shape. So maybe Shocking to hold up Besage you. Maybe doesn't have another land, so they play this. There's a Fable of the Mirror Breaker. If we draw a land, we get to go recommission Esper Sentinel, Portable Hold, the Shaman Token, and, and then we get to cast the... Um, Restoration the following turn. Esper Sentinel, if we were going to draw a non-land, was maybe the best. Uh, not lately, Draken, no. Thank you, Sam, again for the 32 months. They discarded Fable of the... Or they discarded Fable of the Mirror Breaker Season Pyromancer. How? How is their hand so good to discard both of those? And of course they hit a creature instead of a non-creature into my Sentinel. Dang it. Ugh. Brutal game. If I draw land, I maybe just play the Dragon Engine. It blocks kind of well. It's probably going to die, though. Hmm. I drew the land. I did draw the land. Recommissioning the Dragon Engine sounds pretty good. Um... I could just cast Restoration. Getting that extra land is pretty good, probably too. Let me let me let me uh, go with my gut and cast this Dragon Engine. Two two double striker is solid on the board, and with this recommission in the hand, I think it makes sense. Bring it back as a three three. Draw two. Draw three cards because they might have to discard my hand, but there's a chance I can play this first. Their hand has got to be stacked though. They discarded Fable in season Pyromancer, so that's just going to be. Pretty scary. Now they have Reflection plus Fury. Tough day so far today, huh? Tough day. Right. 
don't really have outs. Okay, on the draw. Hey, three months ago, thank you. One is on their own Ragavan, huh? I think if we win the die roll in that last match too, we probably win game one. Oh, we did win game one. Yeah, we lost games two and three. Never mind. <laughs> I don't know why I feel like that we lost game. Game one, it was so wild. Yeah, so I think there's a, a like a different way to build this deck that's like red black instead of white red also, uh, or potentially potentially Mardu, potentially Mardu, where you can play um, you're more in on like unearth and you can play Goblin Engineer maybe more than just one Dragon Engine and uh, Scrap Work Mutt as like a way to like facilitate like the more unearth focused game plan. That deck I've had it like a little bit of a harder time. Hammering out, so I haven't quite um, um, you know, play tested or anything, but I think like you know, I think there's a start there. And so like what one another thing that I think you could maybe do is you could maybe play Aether Vial, where like Aether Vial, Scrap Work Mutt, Dragon Engine, um, Season Pyromancer on Earth could be kind of an interesting engine. But then, like, you're kind of light on any, like, form of good interaction is the problem, and your clock is really slow. And so you'd have to, like, maybe find, like, a combo to finish your opponents off quickly, but there's not really a good one besides maybe, um, Thopter Sword. It... <laughs> what about Esper? <laughs> what about Esper? You can Violin Clothis, yeah. Oh, Lost to Fury, I have to post calling for ban, I don't know. <laughs> one thing, one funny thing about Fury is a lot of times you just lose to the hard cast part, which is pretty fair. Um, okay, so I think I'm actually going to Restoration this turn over Make a Saga Token. I can even get back, um, I can get back the Saga with Restoration if I want to. But it's going to be hard to resolve this card otherwise. I think our opponent is reading. Oh my gosh. Okay, take it all back. The Magic Online interface sucks. This has always been one of the worst things with the Magic Online interface. When you misclick, when, when, when like this thing pops up and you click okay, you just don't get a card. And it doesn't go, it doesn't go, hey, are you sure? You'd, I, it, it, you probably misclicked here, right? You probably didn't mean to just not take your free card. Are you sure? It doesn't ask you, are you sure? Just like, it, and then with Coco, when you cast Coco, it says no, okay. <laughs> it says no, okay for putting creatures into play. It's just... <laughs> Always been one of the worst things about the interface. Yeah, I, I take it all back. That whole conversation we had, I take it all back. All right, so let's um, let's see what we're drawing. We have a lot of options this turn. I think there's a good chance I just want to like get my saga back, although. Yeah, yeah, so let's let's go make a saga token. Make a saga token. Sorry, I, I, st I stacked my triggers wrong. I need to stack it the other way if I wanted to get the saga back. So many mistakes today. But I'm, I'm going to go for a goblin engineer, put a dragon engine in the graveyard, get a springleaf drum, portable hole both my opponent's creatures. And be in generally good shape. This is the first spell cast, despite us doing a few things this turn. Definitely want to target the Shredder first so they don't get to their connive off. So we have to shock here, otherwise we could have played the planes from our hand, but not the end of the world either. And next turn we can play Chromatic Star, maybe get our Dragon Engine back if they don't kill the Engineer. If they do kill the Engineer, it's not the end of the world either. We're not that far away from just unearthing our Dragon Engine. We get to flip the Restoration. 
pretty ahead. Am I currently brewing any Koku decks? I, would, I just played Bant Collected Company earlier today. I, I do still think the deck's well positioned. We had some like rough beats, and we played against some really slow opponents, which was... Um, you know, it is what it is. But beyond that, I, I don't have I don't have any like specific collected company decks in the fire. Here's local meta. I have to move away from Mancoco's getting crushed. What what was it about the the meta that that changed for you? Because if it's Rakdos, you know we have some signifiers on the board. I don't think the matchup is too bad overall. We did lose to it today, but. We won, we won game one and then, <laughs> and then lost uh, our cyborg game where we drew Sanctifier, so maybe that's not the case. Yeah, this is this is a different deck from the Heliod combo. Um, different shell. Thoughts on Finale and Soul Typhoon? It's pretty hard to cast in Soul Typhoon. Um, there's also, like, you would you'd basically be playing it over Ledger Shredder, which would be potentially fine. Um, or Steel Seeker. I, 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 Steel Seeker and Soul Food is still such an enigma to me, too. I just don't know if that's, um, lots of Tron, Mill, Burn, Hammer. Uh, Hammer should be a, a solid matchup if they don't have a bunch of Hushbringers, but that is a, a bad local meta for the deck, yeah. They put a Murktide in the graveyard, which is kind of interesting here. So we flip the Saga. Play the star. Put a dragon engine into play, draw three cards. This is pretty cool. We do have to discard the Stoneforge Mystic though. That's okay. Esper Sentinel should be pretty good here, but um, just game one Shadow Spear on a construct is a little too good to pass up on. Our hammer players are running Hushbringer Man. Yeah, that, <laughs> that'll do it. That'll do it. Getting this uh, construct up to 7-7 seven, seven is also really valuable, so they just can't heat it. We can also um, just sack our Dragon Engine <laughs> to the Engineer and potentially you know, draw three cards every other turn. We could sack it also, we could sack it and just unearth it the following turn, but then we lose the the engine. Where's Mishra for the meld? I've meld with Mishra Dragon Engine once in Modern, and that was uh, enough times for me. That was enough times for me. Uh, I started playing in Return to Ravnica, so a little over 10 years. Uh, the main deck borrower. They're never cutting that card now. That being said, they're still super behind. They have to attack with this channeler. They have to attack with this channeler. I can move the Shadow Spear over to the Dragon Engine, potentially. If they remove the Dragon Engine, they have to fetch Shock, which is not great for them. Architects puts the token into play, not attacking, right? You're just into play. So I'll, I'll definitely be playing Esper Sentinel before anything else, so that if they are going to interact with me um, using this Misty Reinforce for Steam Vents, it's going to come at the cost of a card. Oh, I guess I can't quite I can't quite Stoneforge and Nettle Cyst and Equip. One mana short. I could Stoneforge Greaves, but then I'm not able to. Hello. Hello. Thank you. It's not as milky. Good. good. How's it going? Uh, horribly, honestly. Oh, no. <laughs> Ike, think with two months. Appreciate you. Yeah, this is the backup deck we've been plotting with all week. Mm. Yeah, okay, so if they block the Dragon Engine with, the, with those for Ledger Shredder, I get to weld it back into play. So they seem not too interested in that, and they seem like they're just going to go to one, which is pretty bad when they have the Misty Reinforced in play. Esper Sentinel gets to be more of a taxing card. We get to go Stoneforge Mystic. For Cauldra, don't really mind the Knife so much. Maybe I should have attacked with the Shredder, but this is still fine. Or the Engineer, this is still fine. I think I think I think leaving the the Engineer up is good. Is that the lowest it 
Uh, RTR Innistrad uh, Panda. Because I started at RTR and Innistrad standard was still around. If You know, you'd stay Theros if you started after that. What did you say? I was just seeing if that was the lowest it goes. Was yeah, it? Uh, it's, it's the lowest. Well, it just went... Okay, I spilled Esther's coffee. Today is... Today's just been all over the place. Up a game against Murktide, though. Bringing in the dispatches. Oh, okay, can you just take the, uh... Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so they mostly play Brothers Hood now instead of Explosives, so I think I'm actually cutting Needle, cutting Haywire my... Um, don't love Lantern against them. We're down to only three Saga targets if we cut the Lantern, but that's probably okay since like you're not as in on the Saga game plan post board anyways. Cal, thank you for the five months. Appreciate you. Let me just cut the Lantern. Yeah, I've heard the the John Avon only lands joke a few times. Ugh. What's the reason Mistress Research Desk was not included? Um, we just have a ton of other Saga targets. So we have six Saga targets in the main, which is plenty, especially in a deck that's like looping Saga. Um, we have Chromatic Star in the deck as well, which is like better with Engineer than Research Desk is. Not by a ton, but by but by enough. And, and for the most part, I think like in this deck, we're just not going to be getting the Research Desk often enough to, to want it, which is it's just really not too much deeper than that. But like... I think Dusk is a bit better when... Dusk is, like, in theory a bit better if you're playing a Saga deck that's, like, a bit more generic. So, like, in a, a more red-based affinity strategy that where you don't have um, any, like, high synergy cards to grab. But in this deck, like, main decking the Haywire Might is really good because you can loop it with Restoration. You can even loop it with Restoration every turn if you have Power Conduit. Um... I think Needle main deck is in a really good position right now, especially in a deck like this that lacks some interaction against linear combo decks like Breach and Yawgmoth. Um, you could you could maybe play it over the Lantern main. I think Lantern main is fine, but uh, I think especially with the Chromatic Stars, like the Cantrip effect, you just don't you just don't need it. So no turn one uh, creature is pretty bad for my hand that contains two copies of Portable Hole. Three, <laughs> make that three copies of Portable Hole. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and jam the Engineer. If it gets countered, that's fine. We can Restoration it back later. I'm not even really sure what I'm going to get. Probably just a Dragon Engine. Probably just a Dragon Engine. Is Sword good to keep them low on cards in hand? That's not what Sword of Feast and Famine does in this matchup. What Sword of Feast and Famine does in this matchup is be like really mana efficient and slow. It's not like that's not a it's, <laughs> that's not what Sword does. If you're hitting them with it, it's good, but you're just not gonna be able to hit them with it that effectively. Okay, Saga, great draw. Um, it's going to be very, very good if our Restoration resolves here. I obviously think it's not that likely to resolve, but let's do our best to not misclick and actually grab a Planes. Wow, resolved. Okay. Challenge level. <laughs> Challenge grab the Planes. Nearly impossible, but we managed to do it. Um, I guess it matters more to be able to like stop a Dash Dragovan than to attack for one when, when this is a deck that I think has a, a pretty good degree of inevitability in the late game. Expressive Federation, that's fine. Don't mind that very much. Blue Delta, so if they have a Murktide this turn, it's going to be a 6-6. Six, six. Don't have Dispatch in our hand, and we'd be pretty far away from Metalcraft anyways. They just played in Licensed Hearse, and despite the fact that I will likely lose my Dragon Engine, there it goes, um, I'm at least thankful to... I have a target for my uh, portable hole. 
This turn, I think I'm just supposed to ramp and discard the Inspiring Vantage. Put it into play untapped. Portable Hold the Hearse and then think about resolving Restoration or making a Saga token. And I think I think that post board against like the Brotherhood ends and the Dress Downs, just resolving another Restoration here is going to be good. Especially like the longer you wait on Restoration, the worse it gets, of course. But I can also like stack my triggers correctly this time and like recur the Saga again if I want to. I could hard cast Cauldron next turn if I wanted to. We have a lot of options here. Couldn't you bring back Cauldron with Engineer? No, Engineer only returns artifacts with mana value three or uh, less. What do you think a Breach deck with Urza would look like? I've been thinking about it a lot lately. I think it would look like a bad deck where Breach is a strategy that really rewards you for a super low to the ground mana curve and um, hmm. Breach is a deck that rewards you for playing a very low to the ground mana curve and Urza is a four mana card. Do I think there's a good Urza deck? I mean, I don't know, maybe. Urza's a good card, but you have to just have to be a bit too big, I think. Because I'm not going to use this trigger into the hearse. Um, I get to flip the Restoration. I can get Springleaf Drum off my off my Saga, Hardcast the Cauldra. I think that that makes me not quite as good at racing here as I'd want to be. I think I probably need to get the Shadow Spear. I think the Blue White Thalmer deck with Urza is still pretty good. I mean, I was, I've always felt like that deck is a little underrated. I, I will also say that, um, I'll also say that, you know, I, 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 I there was a, a time where I felt like the, the mono blue version that I have been working on was better than the, um, the blue white version that was popular and There's a chance that my opponent ends up, like, tapping the hearse now because they think I might get Needle. Okay, that's... This is so good for me. I cannot... This is uh, unbelievably good for me because now I just get to go grab Shadow Spear and then I get to return the... Recur the Urza Saga with the Restoration, which gives me so much more pressure. And I think I'm going to go... I think I don't think I need to portable hold this hearse right now. I think I can just go Esper Sentinel and then either equip Shadow Spear onto the Architects, the Construct, or the Sentinel. What's cool about putting the Shadow Spear on the Construct is that they have dressed down my Construct lives. Um, so I think I'm going to do that. Yeah, and we even ordered our triggers correctly this time. Uh, I have a Stormbrain. If you look at the most recent... Uh, a key deck veil. There's a stone brain in the sideboard. I don't think you want to play more than one. Turn Sentinel into a portable hole. I think. I mean, if I wanted to do that, I would have just cast portable hole instead of Sentinel. I want. I want the Sentinel in play. Sentinel is like very annoying for my time. Unexistent. Twenty three months. Thank you. Thank you. And I can just wait to turn on the portable hole really easily. Does Dress Down work with Cauldra? Um, you have to play the Dress Down after the Cauldra enters, but it does. It makes the the Germ Token lose Indestructible, and uh, and Haste and Trample and First Strike. But it is still equipped. Yeah, a lot of Saga triggers, huh? So they can grow their Murktide by hearsing themselves, which is every every Saga every Murktide player's favorite line, of course. This is, I think, the third. They're playing explosives. That's pretty brutal. They're probably explosives on one. Uh, I think this is the third match today where I've been. I guess I'm not quite ten minutes above my opponent, but I think I will will be ten minutes ahead of my opponent soon. <laughs> third out of like five matches. Don't you feel like you need welding jars anymore, even with brothers put in? I mean, the thing about, if you play Welding Jar, it, it does not solve your Brothers Hood in problem. That card is still going to wreck you, like, w w even with Welding Jar in play. Um, it's, 
I, I don't even think I've played World Danger in this exact package. Or, or it's about an 8 key, an 8 key. I mean, you can, you can play it in that shell. You can play a World Danger if you want to, but it's just really tough. Brotherson is going to wreck you a lot. You get total explosives. We do if they don't play a land. They haven't played a land this turn. They heat the engineer. Okay, that's that's great news. Although one bad thing is if they can get rid of the portable hole, then this comes down with zero counters, but that might be fine. They also don't attack with the Murktide. They're also eating these now for no real reason. And they could maybe get punished too since um, They maybe get punished since this could grow the Murktide by two, or the Hearse could grow the Murktide by two. So I, I will get rid of the explosives, and then I can make this a 6-6. Six, six. Hmm. Maybe, it was, oh, maybe I was just supposed to cast Cauldra. No, I think I need, I need to use the portable hole here. So one thing about, um, I only get in for four damage. Yeah, never mind. Never mind. Let's just gigant then the hand and pass. Saga activation up to ready. Thank you, mind sculptor, and thank you, a chest. Hope your meeting was well. I've had the idea lately, what if you just remove opponent's whole deck with cards like Stonebrain and Surgical? Yeah, that, that would be pretty good. Just just do it. Just just remove their whole deck with Stonebrain and Surgical. <laughs> and the, 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 the problem is it just, it's just way too mana, too many cards, and if you're going to be too behind against things on board. <laughs> but it, it'll be good when it happens. It'll, you'll feel so smart. I, I used to, I had a coworker that had a a, like a necromancia deck that was just like it was just it was it was all it was all surgicals necromancia and bridge from blow and i and like i think there was also liliana in the deck damnation and then i don't know what the win, i can't remember what the win condition was the win condition i think may have actually been your opponent decking because you're surgicaling and necromancing them they have less cards in their library than you and you just get rid of all their win conditions and answers to bridge it was re really interesting Obnoxious deck to play against. I think that might have been the WinCon. It's been it's been years since I played against uh, played against it. What killed Lantern? Uh, I mean, Lantern was always a deck that was like at risk of dying because if people were like respected it in their sideboards, it was it just fell apart. But it's a, but you know like many decks that were reliant on. Putting a artifact or enchantment into play, in in uh, in their case, very reliant on putting bridge from below into play. Uh, there's there's become a lot of like very premium, low opportunity cost disenchant effects in in modern that you have access to. Besage you, prismatic ending, haywire might. Leyline Binding. It's just, like, way easier to kill. They probably have Dress Down here. Just way easier to kill artifacts and enchantments, you know. So now I need to think. Is it better to make another Saga token or put a Cauldron to play? A Cauldron that's not even... Um, not even... Oh, I lose Vigilance. That's, that's pretty bad. A Cauldron that's not even going to... I, 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 I could even call your next turn if I just go Stoneforge for Greaves. So yeah, we'll, we'll just plan to make a make a make another Saga token. Why bounce Construct if you have Dress Down? Uh, the Construct had a Shadow Spear on it, so it doesn't die to Dress Down. I figured Lantern was Saga we saw it. I mean, it does trophy every once in a while, but and it's it, it's really not the most embarrassing deck ever. But, you know, th this is, I think, a, a good change that happened to Modern. It, it used to be the case that, like... It used to be the case that you played your Aether Vial, you played your Ensnaring Bridge, and there just weren't, like, almost any, like, a good main deck ways to interact with artifacts and enchantments. And your Blood Moons and your Ensnaring Bridges and your Aether Vials, they just always lived. And they, they were, um, they just weren't, weren't good main deck cards to deal with them. And now, now there's a lot of them. And I think that that was a pretty, 
good design change. Okay, so this kills their hers. It also brings back explosives with zero counters on it. I get to keep both of my architects, though. It would be very cool to beat explosives dressed down Brotherhood End. Not saying I'm going to. Yeah, definitely float mana. Could have floated mana with construct, move shadow spear. I think it's better to just make another construct. But Gersh's colors need a way to interact with enchantments. Green and white get off color stuff. You you can kill enchantments now in black. You you can now actually. That is, there's like three or four black cards that can deal with enchantments. Uh, the only good one is like really invoke despair. Um, but you you can. I mean, you could, you could always counter enchantments too, always discard them. It's also modern, it's like just not that hard to splash a color either. Interesting, they're not gonna hold up the explosives for the construct. Will they attack for 10? They don't. Recommission Shadow Spear? So my Springleaf Drum is gone. I can go Stoneforge Mystic, get Lightning Greaves, equip Lightning Greaves to Stoneforge Mystic, put Cauldra into play, attack with everything, and then I have three three threes. They can't. They have to block. They have to chump block the Cauldra if I take that line, and then go to two. All right. I mean, I think that's the only play. Oh, this, the contract is a four four actually. But the, I have the chromatic star still. So they block here, block here, take six. And then I'm dead to bolt, I'm dead to Two instants and sorceries being exiled. Not a bad plan. No, I think I'm just gonna move the Greaves over to the germ so that it can't get borrowed. I guess the borrowers are here can't get out of warred. My opponent's attacking so fast. So fast. Bummer. I mean, to almost beat Dressed Down Explosives Brotherhood End is pretty cool. <laughs> Not as cool as actually doing it, though. The fact that they have all three is, makes sense. I mean, okay, what's, I guess what's good is my opponent has only five minutes on the clock, so that's nice. Uh, this hand's not very good. I think I'm, can keep, I'm supposed to keep it, though. If, if all of my opponents are going to be like minus 10 minutes on the clock today, uh, <laughs> maybe one of maybe at least one of them can time out, huh? Do they ever block restoration of our constructs since they have explosives? Uh, I mean, they probably just don't, don't want to go to one, but uh, I think they just had the bolt and they didn't think about it. Okay, sad no Ragavan. That's an okay draw, though. Get um, the dragon engine again, I guess. Yeah, Greaves is, Greaves is pretty good in this in this shell. Uh, I've played it in a lot of decks like this to success, but I agree, you don't see it in, in modern all that often. Is it honestly? I mean, no. Today is an outlier for some reason. Like out of our, I think we played this is our fifth match. We've been ahead ten minutes on the clock in three of them. Um, and th that just happens sometimes. I don't think it's like the an all access pass thing or really anything else it just just happens sometimes um i could just recommission the dragon engine and then discard my hand draw three i think i like that i mean the portable holes just don't seem to be doing very much i think that's a bit and i get a three three double striker and then i get to now stoneforge mystic they don't have a counter spell it's a pretty big deal uh, i think with the the second recommission in my hand i'll just get a cauldron 
Recommission Dragon Engine feels feels really good. They can't bolt the I'm oh, sorry, they can't heat the engine, but they could heat the stone forge they have both though. Why are we ten minutes on clock? My opponent's just uh, <laughs> playing slow. Not that deep really. I mean, if they have a bolt and I play the Sentinel, they're just going to bolt the Dragon Engine right now. There's maybe a world where they take six and they have the bolts. It would not be like a correct line, but I don't, I don't see much reason to play the Sentinel pre-combat. Is what I'm, is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, the paid actors are quiet quitting. All right, so we get to recommission Stoneforge Mystic. Grab a Nettle Cyst. And then I think I'll put a Shadow Spear into play. My opponent Brothers Hood ends. I get to I do get to put a Cauldron into play. Maybe draw a card if they don't have a land. Oh, I just do the three damage mode. Sure. So they're not that bad. I have plenty of gas left, especially with this restoration. Yeah, here we can go Restoration Planes, get another Sentinel into play. And then next turn we can recur Stoneforge Mystic, grab Greaves, play Nettle Cyst, equip Greaves to Nettle Cyst, attack for a bunch. That can be an option. Um, we have a lot of lines. It's going to depend on what we draw and what my opponent does. Explosives on one, presumably don't pay if they don't have a land. Seems like they don't have a land because they're not paying. I draw a dispatch and they're about to turn off my metal craft, so I guess I might as well. Or I'm probably going to just discard that here. So let's see what we draw. We draw Stoneforge Mystic. Okay, so let's discard dispatch. Get back Stoneforge Mystic. Grab the Greaves. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> For whatever reason, I thought I had one more... Uh, one more equipment in the deck to grab. I guess the Shadow Spear is dead. I was thinking I could just get all of them, but... Just just having, having a shrouded Stoneforge Mystic is going to be very tough for my opponent to beat here. But I, I guess I probably should have got back Esper Sentinel or, or just the Shadow Spear. But uh, this is this, I think this game does a good job showcasing like why I like this archetype, the Restoration, Mono White Affinity Shell. Like th this is like really the only like artifact focused deck that is like that pretty consistently fights through Brothers Hood End and Explosives and Dress Down. I think most of the other shells you'll see like really struggle against these cards, but like Restoration specifically, Stoneforge Mystic. These cards give you a lot of a lot of equity here that you just wouldn't have otherwise. Why not attack? Yeah, I should have attacked, sorry. I'm a little bit flustered. Okay, so we're definitely putting a cauldron to play. I can also put nettle cyst into play and give it haste. So that'll be one, two, three, four, four haste, which is not really doing so much, I guess. Hammer is favored versus Murktide. Uh, I know Hammer is favored versus Murktide, but it, it struggles a lot more against like when Murktide draws like two plus sideboard cards. This deck is also favored against Murktide, but you know, but I don't know if that makes sense. Maybe I should move the Greaves over here. But like like Hammer struggles a lot more against brother like them drawing two plus sweepers than than our strategy does. Yeah, I guess I should have moved the Greaves over. We're still in good shape, though. Probably bad for my opponent that they have to attack with a Channeler. I'm not that the Bolts. They're dead on board next turn. Can they somehow have two Bolts here? Alright, uh, my opponent's dead. I declare them dead. I, I might as well crack the chromatic star. A 
opponent punted. Um, yeah, they shouldn't have. They should have cast the borrower post petty theft post combat, but you know they have to rush because they're like you know minus twelve minutes on the clock. What needs to f six here? I mean, I just have lethal on board. They can't just f six. I'm gonna keep this. We have turn one sentinel. We're on the draw. We have the the spring leaf drum. How uh, well position you think the pre-shadow deck is? I mean, reasonably. It's just, I, I honestly, I, like, I don't think it's super well positioned, more so that the deck is just really powerful, if that makes sense. That's kind of how it's always been for Shadow. Like, it, it doesn't, like, line up super well against the format. It's just powerful. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, so I, I, I've been kind of theorycrafting a deck like this that's, like, Maybe ju maybe just red black maybe maybe Mardu um, that's like very in on that's playing maybe unearth over recommission for like you know mana efficiency and poten potentially scrap work mod and I think aether vial could be cool in the shell two and asmo but then you just like have no um, if you if you build the deck in that way you have no what's the word I'm looking for. It's not Merc Tide. You have you have no like good interaction and your clock is really slow. So you kinda you have to figure out a way to play a combo in that shell somehow. So my opponent is either playing a prowess variant or breach. More likely to be breach, but sometimes prowess does play on holy heat. Do you have a quarter? No, I don't have a quarter. Do you have one in your car? I I I, I have no money and no cash. Mm. So how do you go to all these? And I need a quarter for a card. It's just all these, like, bad... <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> they, I think they have quarters there, actually. I don't know. I think... Uh, we, we, we're a red deck, so Temple Garden is not for Gigantha. The Temple Garden is for the, the main deck, Haywire Might. Okay, so they can kill the Sentinel and pay. They are Prowess. Just Prowess with Heat. They attack me for 3, down to 11. It's not a super bad matchup, but maybe we stumble a little bit. Have to shock with a Temple Garden in here. Um, that's an interesting draw. I think I'm going to cycle the Chromatic Star. Could also find, we can find Portable Hole, which is pretty nice. Or Cauldra Complete. We can turn off Delirium. Next turn we can, um, I guess we'll mostly just hope to draw land. Uh, it's not merch, it's just a, a gift from my mom pirate. That's the uh, 2023 New Year's resolution. Get some merch, I guess. <laughs> I think this matchup will be fine. I'm not too worried about, you know, winning games turn three if we lose this one. Obviously, you could still lose. If they attack with everything, I block with the Channeler. If they attack with just the Swift Spears, chump blocking is blocking is probably correct with, with us being at eight. It bolts me, pays two, puts me to three. Down to three. All right, let's go to game three or game two, rather. Can bring in the dispatches. Likely not anything else. I think we're gonna cut the needle. We're gonna cut the haywire mite. Um, Lantern is actually okay since they're on breach, most likely. So it's maybe good to like cut the drag. I mean, the deck's like very like dragon engines are really important card. I don't know if we can actually cut it. Come maybe the fourth restoration, kind of slow in this matchup. Let's try this. Oh yeah, I forgot about the opponent who was Shakespeare quoting us in the chat. That was so weird. All right, let's keep this. Okay, opponent's only mole to six. We have power conduit restoration. Turn one Esperson and Storm to play is really nice too. I don't like that we probably have to fetch shock next turn, but besides that, there's a lot to like about this hand. 
Another turn one channeler. Can't bobble really. Hmm. Being punished for our mana base. I think I do think I have to play the power condo with this turn. Um, I don't have any red cards in my hand. It's possible that I don't want to like shock fetch shock here. Let's see what they do. Let's see if we, what we draw. Don't have to make any real decisions now. I might actually even trade Sentinel for Channeler. Probably shouldn't. Probably shouldn't. Yeah, not even given the option. Another Restoration. Let's see. I only have three more planes in the deck. Just no I just know we're gonna draw a red card if I don't get this here. And Prowess is such a good deck. Prowess is like just so good and so underplayed. Just like criminally underplayed, really. I guess it's not great against Hammer. Which version of Prowess do I prefer? So I've been saying that I prefer the, um, I think I might discard the Restoration now that I have Metalcraft here. Uh, I've, I've been preferring the version with um, Third Path Iconoclast. I, I, I maybe am changing my mind a little bit since, let's see if they do anything here. Yeah, I, I may be changing my mind a little bit on that since um, I keep getting my ass kicked by Sprite Dragon. But like the difference between Iconoclast and Sprite Dragon is very much marginal at best. So let's put a counter on the Sentinel so we can draw a card here. And hopefully it's an, a, a cheap artifact so we can just dispatch both channelers. Um, and so, so like the difference between Spray Dragon and Sentinel is really... Uh, Spray Dragon and Third Path Iconoclast is really small. I don't think it matters a ton which one you play. But I, I will say that like I feel very confident in the like 3 Breach, 4 Mana Morphos, 4 Light of the Stage... Or 0 Light of the Stage, 4 Iteration. I think that that... I think that... I think that that is the the version I, I really recommend people play, not the um, not the version with no metamorphose and light of the stage instead. So we didn't draw the artifact. Have I played Breach Shadow version with Iconoclast? Uh, I haven't. I, you know, I, that's the kind of stuff that I, I typically like recommend that you play test for yourself where. Like if you play if you play Iconoclast over Shredder, it's gonna be fine. Um, and like so, like the the thing is like Iconoclast is better when you have Breach and a lot of resources. I think Ledger Shredder will be better on average and better in general, which is you know important. Um, and Ledger Shredder is it makes like the floor on Breach lower, where Ledger Shredder helps you fill up the graveyard where you are gonna have access to. Um, I think I'm just going to main phase these dispatches. It helps you fill up the graveyard so you have better breaches and lets you loot away breach in the early game, which is really important. So this this is why I think that um, I think that Shredder is better than Iconoclast, but it, it's also the kind of thing that it's it's almost impossible to play test like this idea if that makes sense. Where like you can you can play both of them, but like I don't I don't know like how many games you would realistically have to play before what i said like ha, like like where you before you like change your ideas on anything i just said you know what i mean um like you would probably have to play 50 60 matches before you had an idea of like why anything i just said just now is like incorrect okay, hopefully this is light up the stage no just two bolts brutal this has been a very very painful um <laughs> uh couple of leagues i think a good way to palette cleanse and close up the new year is maybe just going to be pivoting to a cube draft or two